Well, hi everyone, and thank you very much for watching or listening today. And today I have a very, very special guest. Very, very excited for this one, guys. Today we have the legendary professional boxer Darnell Boom with us. And we're going to be talking about his incredible career, 54 professional fights, over 300 rounds of professional boxing. And he has shared a ring with some of the very best fighters in history and in the world right now, including Andre Ward, including Jean Pascal, William Monroe Jr., Brian Vera. Uh, I've got a list of them here, champ. There's so many. Craig McEwen, there's Landy Lada as well, obviously, uh, and quite a few others. And he's competed at many weights for middleweight, super middleweight, light heavyweight, cruiserweight, and more. An absolutely stellar career. Um, and so, champ, it's a real, real honor to have you here. That's just a real quick overview. I know you've done a lot more than that. But thank you for making the time, obviously, to be on my show this morning. Big respect. No doubt, bro. I appreciate you having me. Awesome. Well, let's start at the beginning. I mean, you know, like we were talking about just now, you've got some great things going on right now in 2021. Um, you know, you're opening a gym and you've got some great things going on. So can you talk us through a little bit about how your life is right now in 2021, please? Well, um, I don't open a gym in my, uh, my own hometown. Um, I wanted to give back to the community where, where it all started for me. Um, it's called Diesel's Boxing Academy, where... I'm 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 the one that's actually training the kids myself. You know, um I didn't I didn't wanna well I have other guys that come in and uh and, and help me out sometimes, but I wanted to be the one to ex to help out the kids on my own. You know, because I have been around for a long time and I'm not saying that I'm the best to teach them, but I have the more experience to teach them because I actually have fought the guys that I fought and I have had the experience to share the ring with the guys that I shared the ring with. So with the experience of the different trainers I've been through, the different fights I've been through, uh, the different guys that I sparred, you know, I have a different outlook on the boxing game. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, I think it's wonderful that you're giving back, champ. I think it's, I think it's an incredible thing. I mean, you've been there, you've done a bit of everything um, in the game, been around the game a long time, and, uh, you know, it's a wonderful thing. Before we get into the fights and, and all of that stuff itself, though, um, a few months back when we were talking on Facebook, you know, you sent me like a music video, uh, a diesel music video. Can we talk a little bit about that and some of what you're doing with some of the content creation? And like that side of things. Yeah. Um. As far as the music, I've been, I've been, I've been doing music since I was thirteen. Uh, a good friend of the family got me started, named Todd. Um. He was my uncle's best friend, and uh, he he ended up getting me started. He was he was actually writing my material at first, you know. Um. And then I learned how to write it on my own. And I always wanted to put out a project, and um. Uh, Every time I would go to put, pull out a project, my boxing would take off. So it would put it on the back burner. So since like we, I was on my downtime, I, I, I actually rushed it out. I didn't get it mixed and mastered or nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to get the response and see how everybody would respond to me actually, you know, rapping. Because most times the athletes that start rapping or they, they go into a music career, they're really not that good. And um, since I was that good, you know, I, I wanted to just really see what the response would be if I put something out. Okay, very cool, very cool. Well, I thought it was a great track, you know, the one you sent me, uh, really enjoyable, high energy, really good vibe, you know. And, uh, you know, hopefully it was a more champ. I mean, it's really good that you're, you know, you're fulfilling other dreams as well as boxing, you know. Um, I think that's fantastic, to be honest with you. So... Keep up the good work on that one. Um, oh, thanks, man. Let's move into the uh, let's move into the the boxing side of it, though. Obviously, for today, um, I want to go back in time now because here's the thing. I mean, when we're doing an interview like this, you've had way more fights than we can talk about all of them today. So I've done my best to pick a few key ones. You know, um, now obviously Andre Ward is got to come up because uh, obviously that's a famous one, and I'm sure people ask you about it all the time. Now, I know we're going back like 15, 16 years, we're going back in time for this one. But you, to the best of my knowledge, took the fight on a week's notice. And obviously, you were the first guy to knock 
Andre down as a professional, I believe. And so there was a lot of excitement around the fight. Obviously, these days, he's undefeated. He's won multiple world titles, lineal and unified and all this stuff. But when you fought him, he was 6-0, and Olympic gold medalist, and you took the fight on a week's notice. So all of these years later, um, what are your reflections on the fight? I mean, what do you remember about it? Uh, well, you know, well, they don't ever let me forget that fight. And uh, I think, like, I, after that fight, my my team should have slowed me all the way down um, because they knew what they had. Um, and they should have just picked the right fights. But I don't, I don't regret the route that I took, you know, because – it would, the route that I took wouldn't make me the fighter that I am today. You know, yeah, I have my hard fights, but my body's not banged up. I'm not slurring when I talk, um, you know, um, and my body's still intact. And I'm actually supposed to fight soon. So, you know, but with that fight, man, it, we, they called me two weeks, I mean, two months out for the fight. And we they talking about the negotiations and everything for the fight. Then they just disappeared. They didn't call no more. So I'm thinking, you know, the fight probably off. You know what I mean? So they waited down to the last, to like the wire of the fight. And they called and said, uh, well, we're going to fight them. That left me. But good thing that I stayed in the gym. I wasn't in fight shape, but I was in shape. Um... But it gave me, it gave me five days, to, you know, to get ready for the fight, you know. And in terms of the fight itself, though, I mean, obviously, everything he's gone on to achieve, Andre, and you know, um, all the, the achievements he's had since then, the incredible career. But one of the things I want to focus on real quick with this one is his technical skills, you know, in terms of like the hand speed and you know how how gifted he is. What are your reflections on that? I mean, you know, on his skill set at that time, because we've seen his skill set develop, you know, over many years and, and get better and better and all that. But he was still elite, you know, when you fought him. Um, so right. what do you remember about his skill set, you know, at that time? Well, it, it wasn't nothing too much for me. Mm -hmm. The thing was, I didn't have proper preparation for him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So would it be yeah. coming down to the wire like that? Five days out, you know, I, I don't got, I can't really work on nothing for him. I can, like, get my, 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 let me see, let me put the words together. I can get the right, the right strip of conditioning for it, you know what I'm saying? The right running in for it and all that. So, you know, so far as the skill set, that, that wasn't a problem for me. It was just, I, I couldn't get proper prepared for him. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. You know, I mean, it sounds like they messed you around a bit, but obviously it was still a great performance. And obviously, you know, you knocked him down and made history with that. Well, knocked him down twice, actually, I should say, and made history with that. So it was a great performance. Moving on, you know, through a couple of other key fights, because i got a couple of key fights we can talk about and then some, some more general um, things about training. But I do want to obviously give a mention to, um, let me just check, I got these in the right order because I've been a bit, a bit manic today yeah now after that you kept very very busy you know i mean you mentioned this about um after andre this is this is a theme in your career i mean you have a tough fight and later on we'll get to adonis stevenson and we'll get some of these guys but you don't really stop in between that much i mean you just keep on pushing and you know what's the reason for that what's the reason for for keeping your career moving at you know fairly high speed i would say if you get where i'm coming from well, well, like I said, it was it was the people that I was with. Um, mm -hmm. I had I had I had a couple of different teams, mm -hmm. and um, they were they were just they was rushing me along. Sure, you know what I'm saying. So I, I you know, I didn't know at the time because I didn't know the business. I didn't know how the how the boxing world operated mm -hmm. until later on when I was I'm like, whoa. Like all all this that went on, and uh, I, I, they they rushed me, you know. So basically, they did they didn't give me what I needed. Sure. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's you know something, champ. I mean, it's a lesson for because one of the I things rushed. about this, you were rushed. Yeah, because this is a lesson. Okay. You no, know, it's a lesson for young fighters as well, because right. you've been in and done it with you know you've done incredible things in your career, but at the same time, it, it does show you know for young fighters um, to having good management and having the right people around them who you associate with is a very important thing, um, and it's something that fighters you know, they tell me all the time, you know, in the game. But it's a good lesson right. for the young ones, you know, the up and coming. That, that's what that's what I always tell the younger fighters, like you know. <laughs> The people that's in your corner that's for you, and um, you you know when when somebody want, got your best interests at heart, you know. Um, and and that's the team. That's the team you stick with. Yeah, you know that 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 knows where they want want you to be. They have they have. They have Everybody is on the same page to where they're trying to get you to, mm. and that's what make that's what make great fighters. They prop they properly pick your opponents to get you to the next step, the next stage, or the next level, and they carefully put you in place so you can be great. You know, um, I, I wouldn't have wanted to be like baby. Because I was tough, but being that early in my career, I shouldn't have fought that hard. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. It's a good insight into it because, you know, we, we both know that careers have to progress at the right levels and stages and, you know, you've got to pace it. But, yeah, you that's another thing. I mean, you're a very, very tough individual in a lot of the fights you've had. Now, I know, you know, in your fighting skill set, you've got a lot more than just toughness. You know, I know that, just to make that clear. But you are a very tough guy as well. I mean, where does that come from? Is that like a mental strength that you've always had? Is it from your, maybe from your upbringing or from your training? Or where does that toughness come from that, that you've got? Well, I'm from, I'm from, I'm from a small town mm -hmm. where, you know, it's either you make it out or you don't. Mm. And... um. Like the poverty, the poverty stricken area I'm from is, you know what I mean? You have to be tough. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that's how you survive. So we all in survival mode all the time. Mm -hmm. At all costs, we just in survival mode. I don't care if you come in, you just coming outside, you don't know what's going to happen. So you got to always have your head on the swivel. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I had more than the fighters that I was fighting. You grew up mainly in boxing. Yeah, you was from a bad area or you was from a bad hood, but you've been boxing since you were seven years old. You had no time to even be indulgent in any of that. You know what I'm saying? So with me having the grit, that's, that's where my grit came from because I was in the streets. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was fighting, carrying guns, this, that, and the other. So that same mentality that I had in the streets, I took that to the ring. And that's that's what that's what gave me the ups on them because I was more battle ready than they were. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I feel you on that. You know, it's something it's something good to highlight because you know, people don't always realize, and I know, I know you've been very open about it. But yeah, I mean you know you have to be tough in this world, but you definitely had that war mentality that warrior mentality you know and i know you're a very very skilled fighter as well but i just wanted to give that a mention you know now moving on just a couple of other fights here obviously after andre you know like we were saying you were keeping busy um and you had wins you had losses draws you know you were you were very active and obviously we you know we come up on jean pascal you know when you uh obviously went to montreal to, to fight him and obviously he's another one he's gone on to achieve incredible things in his career and yeah. uh, you're a great fighter to watch very exciting to watch and everything like that but again with with that fight what were your reflections because also you were traveling around a lot i mean that's the other thing you you know you had a bit of the, the road warrior thing going on you know you weren't really staying in one place you're moving around fighting guys in you know their hometowns and their areas and all this sort of thing but yeah where's your pascal i mean i don't really have one question about it specifically, just you know, just like what do you remember? What what were some of the highlights of that fight for you? Um, I really don't remember too much about it. Um, 
What I do remember, he was real cool dude. Um, that's another fight that I shouldn't have fought yet. I wasn't ready for that type of fight. He was he was well skilled. He was put together, and he was strong. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, <laughs> in one of the rounds, he hit me with a, a, a right hand to the to the rib. I thought he broke my rib. And uh, that's just one of them fights that I just, I just wasn't, I shouldn't have been in yet. I was I wasn't ready for that type of fight. I was still green. Yeah, I had fights under my belt, but I was still green. Mm. Makes sense. Makes sense. It's, it's you know something, champ. It's really cool to get the insight on it because one of the things we're talking about here is something the fans don't see. You know, it's it's like. It's what people in the game see, you know, the fighters experience this, the managers, people around the game like myself with the media and all that. But like the fans don't see this, you know, I mean, they see two people fight and that's it, you know, whereas there's so much that goes on, you know, in the background and all that. It's really good to be able to mention, you know, it's like the exclusives, like the stories people don't hear, you know. Um, Right. Now, focusing on, uh, I mean, because you had some... Great victories, some tough losses. I mean, again, keep you very, very, very. I want to skip ahead in time a little bit now because we've talked about a couple of losses. So I know I'm skipping ahead a little way, but you know, with uh, Adonis Stevenson, um, again, you know, world champion and everything he's you know, achieved. And obviously, you know, you had two fights with him one win, one loss. I want to talk about the win um, because you shocked the world with that one. I mean, technical knockout. Uh, round two, I believe, wasn't it? And it was just an incredible, incredible um, shock to everybody. And I know he wasn't necessarily at that le- at the highest level at his peak, but he was a he was a good fight. And I remember at the time, you know, you just shocked the world. So with that one, focusing not so much on the fight itself, but focusing specifically on the win. You know, when you beat him, how did you feel? I mean, what goes through your mind in a in a moment like that? If you get where I'm coming from, you know, when you knew you'd won. Well, I uh, I knew I was going to beat them going into it. Mm-hmm. When they called me for the fight, I never heard of them when they called me for the fight. Mm-hmm. But the commissioner of the fight of, the, of that state called me himself on the phone and tried to talk me out of taking the fight. You know, um, so I'm like, okay, well, I definitely want this fight. You're not going to take me, you're not going to talk me out of taking this fight. I'm going to fight him. Long story short, we get we gets to the fight. I'm talking about he he antagonizing me. He, he picking with me, this, that, and the other. I didn't even have a corner for that fight. I took one of my good friends up there with me, and well, I call him my big brother, Andre. I took him with me to work my corner, and I picked up a cut man that was working the corner with another guy. And I mm-hmm. actually think the cut man was actually a trainer, and he uh, he he worked. He was he was my cut man in the fight. He didn't even charge me for working my corner. <laughs> so yeah, I went I went up there and I trained myself two weeks for that fight. Oh. Yeah. So the actually the actually and then you know before the, when the fight was getting made. It, it was just so much. It was so much surrounding the fight, you know. Mm-hmm. Like one, I didn't know him. I didn't have enough time to get ready for him, so I didn't know what to expect going in. But with him picking with me and antagonizing me while we there, you know, I, I had to, I had to, I had to go in there with the. Like I said, I came, I came from the street, so I, my mindset was, I got to beat him by all costs. Mm-hmm. Cause now you're trying to bully me. Yeah. And I took I took that into the fight. Okay. Yeah. I feel you on that. I, I get where you're coming from. That's a, that's a cool story, man. You took in you know that war mentality again. You know was coming out and, and showing itself. Um, talking here about another tough guy because I know because this is the cool thing about your career. I mean, you fought like all different types of styles. You know. Uh, guys yeah, with all yeah. different types of styles. I mean, highly technical guys like Lara, you know, uh, tough guys like Kovalev and, you know, and all types of stuff, man. I mean, you've been in there with every type of guy, you know. I want to give a quick mention 
I mean, because we'll get to some more generic stuff in a minute, but I'll give a quick mention to the Kovalev fights because um, just because it, this was an interesting one because you have that tough mentality. You know, he was known as a heavy, very heavy hitter. And I know, obviously, in recent years, uh, it's not been the same and he, you know, he's had some rough patches. But at that time, he was like a monster, you know, or the reputation was like, you know. So when you fought him, you know, one tough guy against another, um, focusing in specifically on like his punching power and things like that, was it, you know, did he hit as hard as people said, you know, as people made out, or was it the same as a lot of other guys who fought, if, if you get what not, I mean? Not the first fight. He, mm. didn't, he didn't punch that hard the first fight. Mm. Um, I actually was manhandling. And I knocked him down three times. They only they only counted one. Hmm. And uh, they they go they go on record and all that and try to make it seem try to downplay it, but they know what happened. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, uh, again with him, I trained myself for two weeks. Hmm. I had great I had great sparring, but I trained myself for two weeks. Okay. And um. That 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 fight, just like the Adonis first fight, um, I didn't know who he was. Mm. I didn't I didn't have time to prepare for him. They didn't send me video, just that other than nothing. Mm. So I had to figure him out like first couple rounds. Mm -hmm. And um, like again, it was another fight that 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 definitely was winnable. And and I, I actually beat him, you know. And as a fighter, you know when you're in the fight if you winning or losing. And yeah. I know for a fact, and it's a lot of people that was at that fight that can tell everybody that I won that fight. Mm -hmm. You know, with them with them taking them other two knockdowns out of there. You know what I'm saying? That that would gave that would gave him that win. But I knocked him down three times. Mm -hmm. It's a, again, it's an incredible performance, and it's something to be very, very proud of. Um, I'm, I mean, you know, we know in boxing that there's a lot of, uh, you know, dodgy and various things that go on with the judges. So, you know, it, it doesn't surprise me the way it went, but it was an incredible performance, you know, in terms of the real performance, you know, and um, not not so much what the judges say. And uh, obviously, um, let me think now. With I just want to give a quick mention to to Lara, to um, Erzandi Lara, because, you know, fighting one of those guys, you know, and everything he's accomplished in his career with world championships and all of this, being a very, very technically gifted uh, Cuban fighter originally, obviously, and, you know, coming from that school. Um, I mean, this was, that was a, a great fight, I thought. But again, it's a similar, a similar vein to some of these others, but his technical skills, um, I mean, because you handle yourself in all these fights very well, you know, I mean, it's like, you got that war mentality, you know. You got your skill sets always on show, and your toughness is always on shows. You can see what's happening. But in, in your own reflections on that, fighting one of those uh, talents, you know, from that school, what was his technical ability? What do you remember about that fight in particular? He, he was he wasn't he wasn't as technically sound as he is now. Mm. He was he wasn't a mover. He was like he was like a brawler, come straight forward fighter. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He was he was a pressure fighter. With that fight, um, I had got locked up, and I, I was I was gone a year and a month. When I came home, I fought twice. I fought Lewis Turner and I fought uh, Calvin Green, which was they was off just a little under a month, a same amount of time that I was out. So I won them fights, and the people that I was with, they got those fights. Um, got that fight because you know I had I had a lot of fights. They figured I was experienced and I could win this fight because he he had little fights. You know I think he was only like twelve and old, thirteen and old at the time, something like that. Mm -hmm. So they figured me, me having the most experience, I could beat him. But with me just coming home. In the first two fights, I, I still really couldn't knock off the rest because, I, one, I'm still exper inexperienced. You know what I mean? I just got a lot of fights. Mm -hmm. But what they got me with was the uh, the warm-up cool down in the back. 
when it's time to come out for the fight. Boom. Yeah. We got five minutes. Get ready. No, 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 no. We're going to wait another 20 minutes. Boom. Get ready. We got two minutes. No, 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 no. We, go, we got 15 minutes. So I'm, I'm warming up, cooling down, warming up, cooling down, warming up, cooling down. So now it's time for the fight. I'm dry going out there. So by the time I start actually landing some punches and actually putting something together, it's already fourth round, fifth round. Yeah. So what, what can I do? Mm. Oh, even, I, even like even, even like if you watch the fight the first three rounds I look flat mm. yeah 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 I did I do remember thinking that actually um and, and again this is this is a good thing about to highlight it because the fans don't see I mean I mean I've been in a lot of dressing rooms myself and you know it's not always um smooth sailing in there you know but um but right. again for, you know fans watching this or listening to this, you know they don't know that necessarily, so it's a, you know, it's a good situation. But again, I think it's a real testament to, um, you know, your mentality, your warrior mentality. I know I keep saying that, but the reason I keep saying that is you're just fighting these tough times. No matter what happens, it's like you say about being locked up and all this and whatever happened. I mean, that's your business. You, you roll straight out of that, you know, into fights and all this. I think it's a testament to you know your warrior mentality. Um, and I got you know just my just that brother so honestly respect well, so you see like the, the, the fans they don't they don't know like everything that go into the fight they're just watching the two dudes on tv hmm. and there's a winner or a loser or either somebody get knocked out or somebody doing the knocking out hmm. they don't know that everything that goes into getting the fight put together yeah, that's it. That's it, hundred percent, really. In in like a nutshell, you know, as we say uh, in the UK, that's that's that explains it. But you know, uh, something else here, though, champ. We were talking earlier about young fighters, and I think it's a good point now just to give that a mention. You know, with the young up and comers, because some advice that you give for them. Now, I know obviously you're giving back. You know, in your gym, um, which I respect you know, so much. It's incredible. You know, and you'll be giving them advice from you know, your career, because you've been and done just about everything, you know, um, and I know you've got more to come and everything, but, you know, you've done a lot. So what would be some advice um, if we, you know, if we can give it here to young fighters anywhere, you know, around the world, if they're in the States, if they're over in here in the UK where I am, if they're in another place, what would be some, you know, words of wisdom that you'd like to say to them, maybe two or three things, you know, that you, like you could sort of advise them on if they're just coming up in their career, you know, for the young guns and all that type of thing, if you get what I mean. I would tell them, take your time. Um, don't rush it. Hmm. Learn everything that you can learn to get all the experience that you can, you can get before you either step to the next fight or step it up in competition. Hmm. And, and most of all, when you when you make it about the money, you might as well quit. Because when when you're thinking about a dollar, it kind of blindsides you from everything else that's going on around you. Because you're just looking at, oh, I gotta get this money, I gotta get this money, I gotta get this money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And once you lose the fun of fighting or the fun of traveling or the fun of meeting new people, or the fun of seeing different things while you're on the road and you just focus on this dollar, you miss a whole lot. Yeah. That's powerful. I mean, that's powerful. That's a powerful lesson, um, which I think is, you know, really great value for people, um, for young fighters. And, you know, it's, it's a good, really good lesson, champ. I mean, because like I say, in your career, man, I mean, you, you, you've been around, you've traveled around, you've been fighting guys in their backyards and all that. That's another thing, by the way, that I just want to give a quick mention to, because you've traveled a lot. I mean, you was just saying then about being on the road and all that sort of thing. What are some of the best locations that you fought in, you know, where you enjoyed maybe um, exploring the area and things like that? My actual favorite place, and it's crazy, is Portland, Oregon. Okay. 
out of everywhere I've ever been, you know what I'm saying, outside of going to Australia, it's Portland, Oregon, man. The people there were so nice. It's clean. That's when I fought Andre Ward. I fought him at the Trailblazer Stadium mm. in front of all those people, man. That was my first and last time to fight in front of that many people. Okay, yeah. And that was your favorite place? Yeah, that's my favorite place that I've ever it. been, Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Okay. I love it. I love it. And I fought, I fought, I fought a little bit of everywhere, man. And I fought in probably about 39 of the 50 states. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's 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 my favorite place I've ever been, man, outside of Australia. Mm. Yeah, yeah, man. Amazing. And uh, another one, because I mean, I know we've we focused on some specific fights here, but looking back on your career so far, you know, I mean, you've got a lot to be proud of. And, you know, any real fan of boxing will know that you've got a lot to be proud of, you know, but what in your own in your own words basically is your your proudest moment or maybe maybe there's more than one I don't know but you know when you look back on your career and, and you know, something you've accomplished that you just you know you're most proud of, you look back and you think that's the one is there anything that comes to mind for that my my proudest moment in my career hmm. is the whole moment um you figure I, I I didn't go I didn't go to the gym to become a fighter it just happened. When I started fighting, like I said before, I based it on the money. I, I, I couldn't find a job, so I was doing it just because I knew I could make some money. But I ended up, I ended up traveling and fighting the guys that I, I have fought. And my biggest accomplishment of it all is going in there with inexperience and doing well with guys that have been doing this since they were eight years old, seven years old, or whatever they started. And I'm holding my own mm. with limited experience. Whether it's a close loss or I beat you. You know mm. what I mean? For most most of the times, they rob me a lot. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, they don't want to upset that money pot. Mm. But that's that's the biggest accomplishment for me, man, is to actually go in there with them guys that was they call it elite and hold my own on short notice every fight. Mm. It was only one period of time where the fights was tailor made to me. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I went I went four and oh for a knockout. And that's when I had an actual promoter that was Karen at the time you know, for me to get to where I needed to get. And he was actually working. Yeah. And he did, he just had to get for gab. He didn't he didn't really know too much about boxing. He just he just he he actually just talked his way into the game. <laughs> <laughs> but eventually, you know what I'm saying, we end up finding out he was shady and all this and that. But for that moment right there, man, it was almost like it was worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's powerful, man. That is powerful, you know. Uh, for me, for you, for everyone listening to this, um, you know, it's. I I appreciate you being so open about about all this stuff. By the way, um, I mean, I know that's the kind of person that you are, but I appreciate well, it. Uh, I appreciate it anyway, though. Um, well, 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 with you, you you're you're asking the right questions. You know, I, and most most. Most people that be interviewing me, they keep it more boxing than anything. You know what I'm saying? They don't they don't ask the right questions to to get out the the, the perfect responses to the questions that they're asking. You know what I'm saying? They they, they dance around having to me to tell the truth. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's something that um a few people have told me, a few fighters have told me that, but, you know, that I ask these good questions, which, you know, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it because it's, a, it's an amazing compliment coming from, you know, a legend of the sport such as yourself. But, um, you know, I, I do my best to show fighters as people, you know, not just as, 
sure. people will fight yeah. if that makes sense. In, in other words, you know, people see these guys in the rain and all this, and they think that's it. Whereas obviously people have got backgrounds, they've got families, they've got dreams and hopes and all this, and they've got all these things going on. And pe people just don't see it, even the people's reasons for fighting are very different from one guy to another, you know, it's they can vary people's motivations and all this. And I just try and show fighters as real people, um, you know, and I, I always think that regardless of, you know, what sport you're in or any background we all have or whatever, man, we, you know, we all, we, you know, we all bleed, we all laugh, we all cry, and we all have the same type of things going on. And I, so that sort of unity, I, you know, and so I try and bring that in, into sports, you know, with showing fighters as real people. So I'm glad that... See, that's, that's, that's the great thing with boxing, though. Hmm. It bring all the ethnic ethnicities, all the cultures, yeah, to one bowl. And yeah. bring it actually it actually makes every race, every creed, all family. Yeah. You know, and that's the beauty of boxing. You know I mean, I mean other sports, it does it too, but boxing has its own entity. And it bring, it brings every everybody everything that everybody got to offer to each other. Boxing brings it together. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Hundred percent. And that and that's what I understand with it. Whether yeah. it's male, female, child, black, white, orange, green, yellow. You know what I'm saying. Everybody is around boxing. Yeah. You got your casuals. You got your mainstream fans. And you got your fans that's just diehard boxing fans. They don't care if you win or lose. As long as you come and put on a, a great effort, they with you. Mm. And that's what I respect out of the UK fans. The UK fans is man, they 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 some of the dopest fans you can have. They they really don't care if if you like the elite or the small guy. If you come put on a great showing, they're all for you. And um, and I, I'm giving this through experience. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not being biased towards nobody, but the UK got the best fans. They do. They just they just do. Oh well, champ, that's a great compliment for for us all over here. You know, across the pond. Um, and I mean, yeah, I agree. I mean, just because as a culture, you know, um, we love not only boxing in the technical aspect but people who've got the fighter's heart and you know people that are, that are true warriors and we you know we know um we, you know we got that respect for fighters just 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 grow up with it over here to be right, honest right. Boxing so I'm, I'm in a i'm actually in a boxing group called the legion it's on facebook and okay. um i think everybody is from the uk in there mainly yeah i only know me and one other guy Chop, uh, he from he from Florida. That's in the group, but mainly everybody is everybody is from the UK. I think. Yeah. It's it's a great group, man. So if anybody um, is in the finding finding like a good boxing group or to talk boxing, nothing but boxing, where there's no bias, and is I mean we have our arguments over the fights and stuff like that, but. It's all family like oriented in there. You know what I'm saying? Go to yeah. the Legion. Okay. Cool. Well, I'll check that out myself. But everyone else listening to this, you heard it first from the main man. So uh the Legion, okay. I'll definitely check that out though, Champ. It sounds good. I mean, places like that where there's real fans, you know, real solid fans who really understand the sport, you know, there needs to be more of them, you know. So hearing about that is, is really good news. And uh, I'm glad that they're welcoming you as well because, man, you've got a lot of fans over here, you know. Um, that one's for sure, you know. So um, even with this interview, I'm sure it'll be very popular in the UK, but you've got a lot of fans, a lot of respect over here yourself personally, just so you know okay. that. But, um, you know, it's at the lead, you know. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, champ. Okay. Well, and you with, know what? With, with, with me, with me um, I don't know how other fighters feel about it, but me personally, I think it's all about the fans. Mm. They, they like none of us. I don't care whether you're the small guy or you're the big guy. None of us would be where we are if it wasn't for the fans. 
they spend their hard earned money. They watch the guys on TV. They spend their hard earned money to come to the fights. Some mm -hmm. of them spend their last to go to the fights to see their particular fighter that they 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 want to see or to see other guys. You know. But at the end of the day, if it wasn't for the fans, none of us would be where we are. Yeah. So you got you to tip your hat to the fans at all costs. They help you get paid. They help you get the money that you're making, whether it's a dollar or a million dollars. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They're, they're the ones that put you in position to make that type of money. So you got you got you got to give pay homage when you got when you got to pay homage. It's just like that. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Well, it's wise words, champ. I mean, there's been some really, really wise words today. And funnily enough, um, my last question, you know, is: Is there anything you'd like to say to the fans uh, specifically, or to your supporters? Because we've covered more than I was hoping for. You know, I mean, this has exceeded. Uh, my expectations today, to be honest, would just be really, I knew it would be good, but it's been really incredible. So, I mean, the last thing that I do really have is just any anything you'd like to say in general or to, uh, you know, your supporters, you know, those people that have been there for you um, over your career, anything you'd say to them? Yeah, I just, I just, I thank everybody for showing me love and the support um, through, through my whole career. Um, I didn't, I didn't have a career like I wanted once I really got settled into it, but I had fun. Mm -hmm. And I got, I got to visit a lot of places I knew I would have never been to. Um, and I just thank everybody for just showing the support. You know, I ain't done yet. Um, I'll, I'll probably give myself another two, three years max. Um, because I haven't got out everything that I wanted to get out of boxing. Now I'm going I'm to give myself a, a serious shot and take it a little more serious than I have. Mm -hmm. So be on the lookout. I will be back. I will be at 68 or 75, and I will be back to get problems to everybody in, in the weight classes. So just keep, keep your eyes on the horizon because the diesel is going to be back in the mix soon. Incredible. Well, that's great news, champ. I mean, that's great news, obviously, for you, but for everyone watching and listening as well, keep an eye out. Diesel is coming, guys. He's coming back. And, uh, champ, I'm really pleased to hear that. I'm really, really pleased to hear that. Um, so definitely, you know, I mean, I'll be supporting you all the way, by the way, like I, I'm like I have for years anyway, you know, over here across the pond. But uh, I'm sure lots of other people will as well. Um, uh, you know, it, yeah, we're excited to see you back, champ. And I just want to say, obviously, thank you for today. Thank you for taking time out of um, your morning, you know, to speak with me and to share everything that you shared um, and to be so open and just honestly respect. And uh, I really, really appreciate it. Oh, most definitely, man. I appreciate you having me. And it's, it, it's a big thing to me for you to have me on because you didn't have to do that. You know, so it, it lets me know that I made some type of impact, some type of way. And I'm yeah. appreciative of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you have, you have. I mean, um, wow. Uh, you know something, I think you made a big impact on boxing, but also on people's lives, you know, in the sense that, you know, you've inspired people to, you know, keep pushing and keep going and showing people what's possible. Um, I really think you're the type of person that shows people what's, what's possible in life, in the sense that, you know, it, it doesn't matter how you start, but it matters, you know, how you finish type of thing, you know, in, in the sense that, you know, right. you didn't come up the hard way, not just in, you know, where you come from, like, but in terms of your career as well, you, you know, pushed through the hard way and, you know, you still accomplished a lot and you still obviously been all around and fought the best guys and, you know, fought legends and become a legend, I believe, and all this sort of stuff. Uh, I really think that that shows people, whether whether they're boxers or not, you know, I mean, they don't have to be, maybe it's, if it's in a different area but it shows people that with that mindset and stuff you can accomplish anything even when you know life is basically stacked against you in a way you know but you, you, if you want to accomplish something you can still do it and I really think that you've inspired a lot of people um, and you know that's just my opinion but I think that that's 
the biggest reason I wanted to do this interview, you know, yeah, the fights is really exciting and, you know, you've been in some great fights, but it's, you know, you as an individual, if that makes sense, um, right. is the reason because I think you've had an impact on me. And I'm not just saying it. I mean, some people, um, they're, they're great athletes, but they don't have that other quality um, of impacting others. Whereas I think you impact others. You might not realize it because, you know, you're busy and you're traveling and fighting and all this, but, you know, you impacted me all the way across here, like thousands of miles away. You can imp- right. definitely impacted a lot of other people. So, right. so just give us a chance, just take that one with you, okay? Thank you. Most definitely. It's been an honor. I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of your um, your day. Obviously, it's a bit later over here, but uh, I'm going to enjoy the rest of mine. Uh, and uh, the people, the people, if you got questions, um, just want to talk or whatever, you know what I'm saying? They can, they can find me on Facebook at Darnell Boom, uh, or they can find me on Instagram at boom.darnell. You know, anything, I talk to my fans. I like to get personal with the fans. Um, I actually answer and, and respond myself. So, you know, if you want to talk to me, just hit me on either one of those two social platforms. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, guys, anyone, you know, when you're listening to this, honestly, hit that nail up, man. He's 100% open, friendly, easy to talk to, and, you know, always answers it personally. There's no managers, there's no nothing. It's all him. So, guys, you know, hit him up, guys. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to shoot off because uh, just for other calls and bits and bobs I got today. My pleasure, man. Oh, yeah. All right. You have a great day. Enjoy it to the full. Maximum respect to you. All right? Yes, sir. So, all right, Team Diesel. Please believe it. <laughs> yeah. Have a good one, brother. All the best. You too. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel, and there'll be more videos coming soon.